So, welcome everybody to the first practical session of our computer vision school. We are working with a notebook, dive into data, finding and preparing data. The goal of the practical sessions, not just this one, is to build an image classifier. We are going to use a data set from the repository GAMS, based here at our institute, and we are using historical images from the collection Visualizing Family, Gender Relations and the Body from the Balkan region. So most of the images date approximately from 1860s to 1950. So in, with this data, we are going to build an image classifier that estimates the century of origin for the given image, whether it was 19th century or the 20th century. All information about the images are stored in a CSV file we provided, like here. And this is essentially a simplified version of the original data. Now, why simplified? Uh, we think that this, this makes it a little bit easier, the, the learning process a little bit easier, because the goal, the focus of this winter school is uh, not to explore the complexity of the date format or dating historical artifacts, but of course much more to show you uh, how you can organize effect effectively your own collection for the future machine learning tasks. The goal here is also not to explain like every little de code detail, but much more to give you an example how to handle your own data. And we really hope that you're going to be able to use this example adapted to your own needs to your own, for your own future projects. So now to train a classifier, we need a label data set. That means we have to associate each image uh, with a label, with a corresponding label. In our case, these labels are the century of origin, whether it was 19 or it was the 20th century. These uh, labels serve as the so-called ground rule uh, that uh, our classifier would learn from. That means the process um, or maybe one uh, more important uh, term, this process is known as supervised learning. And this allows the model to understand the pattern or features of each century. And uh, so making it possible the model to correspondingly guess the, the correct century for the given image. So the first step, what we are going to do right now is we're going to collect the relevant images. That means we are looking for images where we can confidently that we can confidently classify as either taking the 19th century or taking in the 20th century. And I would like to ask you now to open the uh, provide a CSV file and just take a few minutes, get kind of comfortable with it. Uh, what what do you actually think about it? Uh, do you do we have to filter the images maybe or? Uh, do we have to exclude uh, some, or do we have to, uh, or we can just use all of them? So if you are if you are following this um, this tutorial online, I will invite you right now to pause the video. Uh, welcome back. Now after in is, uh, inspecting the CSV file, it has became kind of clear that the data is a bit inconsistent, that unfortunately we cannot just take all of the pictures. We need to filter the entries based on the certain criteria. But first, let us uh, define what is 19th century or 20th century. So in this uh, task, we understand 20, 19th century, uh, century as the years from 1801 uh, to 1900 and the 20th century, 1901 to 2000. Here, we have gathered uh, some filtering criteria. We will go uh, through each of these points uh, when we are looking into the code. So I think I'm going to just skip this part. Like I said, we're going to handle this in depth uh, in a few minutes. But before we start, we have to, uh, be before we will start on our coding part, we have to import some libraries and load, uh, and load the data. The library we are going to use to do this task is uh, called Pandas, and it's a data manipulation and analysis library. We are um, 
And another one, we need a library in NumPy. That's actually a mathematical computation in Python, but we, we need it, I think, just to, to insert some NaN values. So here we are loading our data. So uh, we are loading this file, uh, this file to the uh, pandas data frame. The first thing we have to do is kind of a pre-process. What we are doing here, we are actually just cleaning the table, so to say. Uh, first, we're going to strip all the values uh, and remove some unwanted white spaces in your lines. I don't know if you can notice, there are unfortunately some, if, and if we want to take the step, we're going to get some error messages. After that, we are go we're going to replace the blank values with a value on n, and here we are using the library in MP, like I said before. And now we can actually start with the filtering process. The first thing we would like to do is to include only the images where the type is a, a photograph. The, because there are some more, I think we also have, uh, we also have postcards and even some other uh, types of images. So to do that, that is what we are doing in this, uh, uh, in this uh, line of code. Afterwards, we are going to remove the entries where the date from is empty. Why we are doing this? because uh, that actually means that we have no date. So if we have no date, we can't be really sure when this picture was taken. So we're gonna remove all of these pictures. After that, we're gonna uh, replace empty strings with NAN for date two, although I think this is actually redundant because we, uh, that uh, there should be no empty spaces uh, anymore because that's what we did here. But let's leave it for now. So I also maybe should just run the code. I always forget to do this, but let's see if everything is working as it should. Yeah, all good. So the next step is to convert the date from and date to to numeric. Why we are doing this? Because we would like to compare these two entries. To compare the entries, um, so to do that, we need these uh, two lines of code. So. Everything works just perfect. Everything uh, after uh, mm, now we have to filter. Uh, we have some more filter criteria. Um, first, we're gonna exclude all the entries where date from is less than 1901 uh, and date two is greater or equal to 1901. Why are we doing this? Because in this case, we are actually we cannot uh, we cannot say for sure when this this picture was taken. Both century are actually possible. Then, the same happens actually in the same uh, in the second uh, filter, uh, but here we are filtering entries where date from is less than 1901 and the date appendix is after. Again. In this case, the, there, there is a possibility that this picture was taken whether in 19th or in 20th century. We cannot know for sure. Next, we're going to exclude the entries where date from is greater than 1900 and the date appendix is before. It's actually the same story again, just the other way around. And on the end, we're going to exclude all the entries where date from is greater than 2000 because we are not interested in the uh, 21st century. Uh, there are just a few examples, but there are some. Now finishing with this step, we're going to assign the labels. F first, we're going to start with creating a new column, just an empty column called label. Um, after that, we're going to assign the number 19 for 19th century to, uh, for the uh, entries, uh, entries that meet specific conditions. These conditions are that the date 2 is less than 1901 or the date from is less than 1901 and the date appendix is before. The third condition it is the date from is less than 1901 and the date appendix and the date 2 are actually empty because that means this picture was taken exactly in this year. Now. We're going to also assign uh, the number 20 to the, uh, uh, to the entries uh, that are 
that meet the following condition, meaning the date from is more is greater than 1900. Pardon. So doing that, now we can check if everything worked fine. Here we are just printing, we are actually counting uh, the entries in our data frame, which is actually equivalent to the images that we are interested in. We have, uh, as you can see here, we don't really have so many images. After that, I'm gonna uh, store this data frame into a CSV file. It's not actually very, really necessary for our task, but I always like to do this. So when finishing, Finishing uh, with this, uh, all this filtering and assigning the labels, it is uh, time to organize the images. Now, let's think about it, how can we actually do this? We have more possibilities, but there are two very common approaches how to do this. The first, it would be to create a directory for each label. In our case, we would have two directories uh, with names uh, 19 or 20. Or the second approach it, uh, would be to have just a single uh, directory uh, with all the images and as a, with an associated uh, CSV file containing the names of the photos or the fats or something like this and a corresponding label, which is somehow have to uh, create this connection between the image and the label. So we are going to take the first approach. And now in our case, all the uh, images are online. So what we are going to do, we're going to download them directly to the, uh, to the correct uh, directory. But maybe in your case, you already have your images uh, stored locally. So um, then you will actually, um, the process is actually still the same. It's just that you're not downloading the images. You will just want to copy uh, them. To do that, you can use the Python library uh, Shuttle. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Uh, Python module, uh, module is very easy to use and it works perfect. So we start again with importing some libraries. Uh, we have provided uh, some uh, short uh, description what these libraries are for, but uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna continue with create first creating directories for images. So uh, again, we have to import the libraries. Not to forget to do this, then afterwards we're going to just create the libraries, uh, the, the directories, pardon. Uh, to use, uh, for this task we are using uh, the library, uh, the library OS. Now we can look if everything worked fine. Yeah, now we have here this data folder with century uh, DS and two empty, still empty directories. Now we have to download the images, but where actually the image, uh, where are the images? We, I, I have said nothing about it yet. Um, the URL of the images you can find in, the, uh, in our CSV file. There is a column with the name image one. And, but you have maybe also noticed there are quite many image columns there. Uh, but after examining the picture, you're going to notice that we actually need just the uh, column image one because uh, there the front side of the image is actually stored. If you're looking, if we're going to check for the image two, for example, you're going to see this is just the back side of the picture and we are not really interested into this, uh, these images. So here we are. What we are doing here, we are actually iterating through the, all the rows of the data frame. This is still the same data frame as before, this one here. And first we store the name of the image uh, in a variable. In this case, we just have to uh, uh, split the string to remove one part that we don't really need. Um, Afterwards, we are using a library request to, to download the images. So we are uh, going to uh, download all the images uh, from, uh, from the URL given in the column image one. Uh, and if the label is 19, we're gonna store it in the uh, directory 19 with the name and uh, J, uh, JPEG extension. Otherwise, uh, we're going to store the image uh, to the directory 20. What we also have here is a, is a very uh, small delay 
that's just we are just doing this not to send too many requests at once because we could get an error message so let's try to do this this will now take approximately 20 minutes and then i see you for the second part of this uh, first practical session thank you